G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. It was during the filming of the very first video for this channel that I experienced a devastating loss. That's right, I blew up my multimeter. A very sad day indeed. But today, I hope to get my favorite multimeter up and running again, resurrect it back from the dead, so I can put it back into use again. What's wrong with it? Let's check it out together. It was during my very first video where I repaired a microwave oven that this poor fella couldn't cope. He had a bit of a heart attack in fact. He couldn't cope with the 1500 volts that I ran through it. Don't know why. These fellas aren't rated that high so I can't blame it. Use a fault. I've already partially got it apart so we'll check it out and see what damage has been done. Look I'll be honest with you part of the reason that I haven't attempted to repair it in the meantime through all these years is because I didn't feel that I had the skill level and I was probably right. Look you're learning every single day and I don't know if I can fix this thing or not but let's have a look at it. I have repaired multimeters before but uh, perhaps not to this extent. To disassemble this multimeter all you have to do is disassemble the plastic housing off the back. Then unscrew the back housing, pull that off to one side and then we have to remove the circuit board off the rotary dial here or the rotary switch and that can be a bit of a pain at times, not too bad in this case. Just be careful with these fellas here if they go in the wrong spot all hell breaks loose. Let's turn that rotary switch and see what we get. Nothing's happening. You can see that despite turning the rotary switch here, we're getting all the same features, aren't we? And the display appears to be okay. All the features are operating. So I don't have to check the display itself. I don't have to start hunting under here. But obviously there's a process of fault or something along the line. You can see kilohertz change here. You can see hertz. I had it in the voltage range when it blew up. So that's the off section there. It should Next should be the DC rating. So that should be DC but you can see it's got all sorts of uh, weird stuff happening there so I'll have to look further. Now I might not be smart enough to figure out if an IC is had it or not but I am smart enough or lucky enough I should say to have a second multimeter that I can compare measurements on my ICs. Now I've gone through uh, my uh, diodes, I've gone through transistors, I've gone through quite a range of things and I'm coming up to the IC level now. So just for comparison I'd like to show you what I've been testing. Now there's one down here, look I don't know what the names are, I do have them in stock now, I have been waiting for a while for these parts. We just compare apples for apples. So there's 0.6 there, 0.8, 0.8, 8. Let's go over to this one over this side, see how that compares. 0.6, that's an open. 0.9, and that's an open again by the books. So that one's had it, that little bloke there. Uh, what was the other one I checked? This fella here I believe, and I came up with 0.7, 0.7, and if I go along, right along, they're all about 0 0.7, 0 0.8, something along those lines. If I come over to this one over here, my good one, and I compare, that's giving me 1.2, and I get the same sort of readings. So there are a few of these ICs that have obviously had their bums blown out of them, and I have uh, been waiting a while to get them in stock, but now that I've got them in stock, I'll be able to solder them in. Who knows, that might fix the problem. If not, I've got to search further. I've had a good look over the board and I can't see any faults in any other areas and those little ICs can be fussy. So I'll replace those and see how we go. You'd have to agree that when you get to this component level when you're working with ICs they can be a bit tricksy to get off the board themselves. Look I'm working around the camera at the moment so you can have to bear with me but you can see I've actually flooded the whole area with solder. And that way, once I heat up one leg, I'm basically heating up all of them. So what I'm going to do is hopefully just heat up all these legs at once. And I should be able to just gently lift up that little IC off one side of the board at least. All right, I'll turn him around the other side and we'll see if we can just get this side up as well. I don't 
to get a little imaginative underneath perhaps. There we go. So a set of legs just popped up. So flip him round. Get you guys back in focus again. And then hopefully without lifting any of the track up. Just pop that off. There we go. Job's done. And hopefully I can just tidy up all the track there and refit the new one. As you can see I've just tidied up all these tracks once I pulled off my little IC there. Now it's pretty important to make sure that we have the orientation of the chip the correct way around. So we want to stick them in place there and then just dab some solder. I don't know if I'll be in your road or not but I'll see what I can do. Um, dab some solder just on one leg to make sure that it's in place correctly and then uh, put the other leg in as well. So generally speaking, generally speaking, it's not too bad. Once you get one leg in, it's all right. And then check that back leg, check the orientation of the back leg and make sure that that is straight. It's a little bit cockeyed there, but uh, not too bad considering I'm working around a camera. Then it's just a matter of soldering each leg on. So the legs have turned out quite well, I thought. Um, there's no joins in between. I've been able to stop any bridging happening. So that's looking pretty good. I replaced another couple of ICs that are definitely crook. At the moment, I'm replacing this CD453BM and that fits just in here. Now what I didn't show you before was that I've been using this Amtec soldering flux and it does a great job. A uh, little syringe that you can use and just pop it into place. There's no big mess anywhere and quite easy to use. So I've tidied up all my um, IC tracks there, the little legs, and put some new solder down so it's ready to drop in place and that's another IC out of the road. And you can see that I've just put some new solder down onto these little legs, preparing for the IC. So there's another chip put into place. Um, don't worry about these solder uh, legs being joined together. They're on the same pad, so it doesn't matter if they're bridged out, but all the others are in good nick. And I've cleaned them down, all with a bit of uh, osopropyl alcohol, um, just to get rid of all the flux. And I've checked for bridges. I've also checked to make sure that the IC has good uh, footprint contact, I guess you could say. Made sure all the legs were uh, in place. I'll double check with the multimeter later on, but for now I'm just replacing all those dodgy ICs. I've gone ahead and just replaced two of the ICs that I suspected were faulty. This little bloke here, which is classified as a 27M2C, which is an op amp, and that was located just over here. The second fellow that I did is classified as a CD4053BM, and that's a multiplexer. And that was located right here. I think I got it sorted. Check this out. I'm using my good multimeter as a comparator, and if we just turn this on here, we should get a reading of some description. Remember, before we had a jumble of numbers, nothing made sense. But I've connected both my multimeter leads together so that we can get a comparison between a good multimeter and what I'm reading here as I test the features. Already you can see that the ghosting is quite accurate, uh, very similar to one another. So let's just test a battery for a start. That should be what, 9 volts? Odd? Let's see how they compare with one another. And we've got 9 34, 33, 35, look at that, spot on. And of course we should have a negative reading if we turn our polarity around the other way. And we do, exactly right, perfect. What about AC? So if we switch both of them to AC volts, of course I'm guessing with this one, but it should get right on the screen. Uh, must be there, there we go, AC as you can see. I've got my AC-DC bench supply, so I'll just hook that up and see that they're consistent with one another. 1.4, 1.3, that's not too bad. We had 2 volts there. There we go, 2.3. I just had a bad connection, but that's all good, hey? That looks pretty good. So AC, nailed it. What's next? So what about resistance? That's next on the screen. 
I've got a 4.66k ohm resistor. Let's just check that with both meters and see how that compares. 9.34, 9, yep, pretty close, pretty close. So that's all good. So, yep, tick that off the list. Resistance check is okay. So next on our list is our little buzzer, our piezo buzzer. You can see the sound symbol there in the corner there. Um, the screen's pretty dodgy on that. I think I used some sort of spray on my poor old multimeter before it blew up. Let's see if both those buzzers work. Okay, let's turn this one off so you can hear the other one. Perfect. Next on our checklist is the diode feature. I had to put the face back on this fella because I need the touch button here, the soft touch button to activate the diode feature, which I have. It goes from our sound button across to the diode feature, as you can see there. So does this work? Let's once again try both meters. And we've got no reading there, which is correct for a, a one-way valve, electrical valve, a diode. Let's turn him around the other way and see if we get a reading there, which we do. It looks fairly consistent across the board. Spot on, excellent. When you're ready to check for current on a multimeter, make sure that you remove your lead from this section over here and put it over to your 10 amp scale, depending on the scale, of course, and make sure that the function is in the 10 amp scale, your rotary switch is at the 10 amp scale. Keep in mind when you're hooking up a load you have to put your multimeter in series otherwise you end up blowing the fuse. So in other words we hook up one lead onto part of our load which is a globe that I have here. Just sit him there. The other terminal goes onto the battery and then the multimeter lead goes onto there. You can see we've got about oh, 1.78, 1. yeah about something along those lines and that lines up with what I'd written down before, about 1.8. How does that compare with our blown up multimeter? Let's have a look. 1.76, something along those lines, perfect. Our frequency reading, which I've got my function generator working here, is 113 over there, 113 over here, very close, a little bit slow in its refresh rate, but they're both working consistently. And our duty cycle, while it's not reading exactly the same as it is here, they're consistent with one another, perfect. Look, Mrs. Miracle seems to think that I'm, I don't know, slightly obsessed with multimeters. I wouldn't have a clue where she gets the idea from. Of course, keep in mind that's just a few in my collection. And I hate to break it to you, but I've got more out in the workshop. I'll be honest with you guys, I'm pretty excited that I've got my original multimeter up and running yet again, resurrected back from the dead, ready to play another day. I hope you enjoyed this video today and learnt something as well. As usual, I've added to my skill set and gained more knowledge on the subject. So if you did enjoy this video and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give it a like and feel free to comment down below. And of course, hey, don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. So until next time guys, this is Miracle Max, I'm signing off. Catch you later.